Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, we're gonna do a little test with a boche and two different kinds of yeasts. So let's get started. So the base recipe that I'm using today is a, uh, a orange blossom boche that I've made. Now, I made this last night. I didn't document the process of, doing the, of making the boche. If you wanna know how to do that, I have a video out for that. But this mead is um, basically a, a boche where you caramelize the honey. You heat the honey up. And I've done a little honey wheel, as I'll call it. This is what I use to determine how, um, you know, what the color difference I want for my honey to be. It also determines the different characteristics of the honey you get over time. So when you boche something, you boche the honey, you're burning, caramelizing certain sugars. At certain points, those sugars are not uh, fermentable anymore. And so what I've done is heated this honey up enough to where there are some sugars that are not gonna be uh, edible by the yeasts, and therefore there will be some residual sweetness. So my base recipe is, you know, I'll put it up here, but basically four pounds of honey, boche honey per gallon, and we are gonna be uh, trying two different kinds of yeast. Today, I wanna to see which does better for a boche, or at least this kind of boche. We're gonna be tasting, or using, the Lauvin D47, which is a common mead yeast in this thing, and then we're also going to be using the Lauvin 71B1122 um, yeast. So, I made a yeast starter. All right, I'm gonna talk over this. I made a yeast starter for both of these. You can see here, I'm gonna pour both of them in. I'm also gonna to have to add nutrients because Boches don't have a lot of nutrients, so that's what I'm also doing there. Um, I'm curious to see the results of this, so there we go. All right, so we're 10 days into fermentation, and they're almost done. Um, this one, this is the D47. You can see it's got a little more bubbling action on top than the 71B. Um, the thing that's surprising to me is this D47 is actually at, um, it, it's a little bit, I mean, the reason there's more bubbling is because it's still fermenting kind of actively. The gravity reading for this currently is 1.010. And, excuse me, the uh, 71B, the gravity reading is 1.005. There's gonna be a, re a little bit of residual sweetness, and um, I know that for sure, but, I just wanted to give you an update. 10 days into fermentation, both of them fermented fermented really well. So I'll be curious to see if this one ends up getting to 1.005. Okay, we're back with our Boche test between these two yeasts, the Lauvin, uh, this is the Lauvin D47. This is the 71B. Um, you can kind of see maybe in the camera, these things are um, two different colors. That's partially my fault. Um, they fermented really well. They both finished fermenting in about seven days, um, but they finished at different gravities, and I'll talk about that here in a second. The when I racked it over, I racked this one pretty well, and I but when I racked this one over, I accidentally got my auto siphon in the bottom, and it picked up some of the sediment. So this is a little more cloudy, um, which might affect the flavor some, slash how it ages, but that's okay. So here's how these these fermented well, but they didn't end at the same gravity point. Uh, the D47 ended up at about 1.0075, just a little bit um, under 1.001. Does that sound right? No, 1.01, .01. right underneath that, uh-huh. Um, and I think that's interesting because the, I thought the D47 would have chewed through more of this. The 71B actually went and it got down to 1.002. So it is not quite complete, not quite um, leveled out, meaning they both have residual sweetness. I expected that from these because a boche has caramelized honeys that are not always edible by the yeast after a certain point. So let's get a taste test of them. I have both of them here. And my right, your left, is the D47. And your right, my left, is the 71B. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and smell them first. The, they have a similar smell as far as honey character, which I expected. Um, the 70, or the D47, excuse me, has a little more of a yeasty smell. I think that's because of how I racked it over. I didn't do super well with that. But they, they smell very similar in aroma. Um, 
Let's go ahead and taste them. Let's start with the D47. Yeah, so this thing, it, um, it has a really, a, a much more caramel note than I um, remember from my last Beauches. And you can definitely get the fruitiness from the orange blossom um, honey. It is, there's not super smooth, but it's only 12 days old at this point. Yeah, this thing is, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's very flavorful, which is nice. Uh, the, you still get the honey character and this caramel note from the Beauchang of the honey. Uh, I think that there's a little bit of a yeasty taste happening here, a little bit of a bite from the alcohol because it is setting at about 13%, I believe. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Let's taste the 71B now. Okay, this one's much smoother. Doesn't have as much yeasty taste. Has the same notes. Um, very, uh, uh, you know, tropical fruit. You can get like a... It's almost like a grilled... It sounds weird, like a grilled... Um, or like a blood orange. Uh, blood orange has like a smoky-ish, like uh, almost grilled to me taste. Uh, this is kind of like that. It's like a grilled orange, which is weird. It's much smoother, has less bite at the end. Yeah, they both have some sweetness to them. Surprisingly, the D47 has less, is less sweet than the 71B. Um, and this one actually ended up going drier than the D47. So I expected this D47 to be sweeter. Yeah, there's a little sweetness from the alcohol, maybe. Both are really good. I mean, honestly, I'm a huge fan. If I had to pick up between the two currently after only about 11 days of its life, I would say the 71B because it's a little more smooth. It has a more rounded character. I think the part, part of the problem with this is the, um, there, I did not rack this one really well. And so there is some yeasty, maybe sediment-esque flavor going on right there. Uh, I'm not quite done with this video. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these age for maybe another two weeks. Um, and then I'll taste test them again, see if it's any better. I'll probably rack this one over once or twice to really try and get it off any extra sediment that I racked over. And then uh, we'll talk about maybe some other changes. But so far, this has been an interesting test. The, the better yeast, in my opinion, currently in this moment is the 71B for a Boucher. But we'll find out if that's true if anything changes in two weeks. It's been two more months since I last tasted this, and uh, I am interested to see how the characters and flavors have developed. Right here is the Lavin D47. The 71B is on this side. This test is really just between these two. I can't say for anything, any other ones. So let's try, let's do some smell, like, you know, aroma check first. The, now I, I haven't gone back, I've made a lot of mead since then, so uh, I do. Rem I don't remember everything that I said, and I haven't gone back to check my notes. But the D47 is a little brighter smelling. I'm going completely off of what I'm getting now. It's brighter smelling. You get more of the orange floral side. Um, it definitely has a sm not necessarily smoother. They're both, they're both smooth. Yeah, the 71B is not as bright. I'm getting more. Um, well, I'll put it this way. The D47 to me has more of a um, orange, like true orange smell. And I'm getting like a dark fruit smell. What I really think I'm getting from the 71B is a blood orange idea. More of a blood orange, darker orange smell. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's taste it. This is a D47. Man, two months has really done a lot to this thing. Super, super smooth. Um, I'm getting a great, uh, it's got a really interesting body too. It's pretty full bodied. Uh, it definitely is retaining sweetness well and that orange character is popping out a lot, like I said, on the aroma and also on the taste. Yeah, this thing, okay, so it's it's almost like a little bit, I always say this about anything that has a high ABV. It's a little bit dangerous because this thing is super, super smooth. You don't get a lot of alcohol content on it. Uh, I do get more bright notes from this. Now let's see if the 71B has any different taste. Okay. Definitely a more 
more of a muted fruit. Um, it's still there. I'm definitely getting more of a just standard boche taste, which if you've never had a boche, I I would characterize it as a most of the time a little bit smoky, caramel, caramely tasting. Uh, I get kind of spirit notes, whiskey notes normally from each one. I'm getting a lot of those kind of things, not as much fruit um, taste. It's definitely a fruit taste, but it's darker. It's not as prominent as this one. Uh, I, <clears throat> this is interesting. Neither of them are bad. I think that's what's difficult. Well, I'm, I'm not deciding necessarily which is better. Um, I, I do want to tell you which one I would use in, a, in the case of making a boche. But they're both really, really good. They have pronounced different notes pronounced in them. So uh, if you want something, I think that at least specifically, maybe with this orange blossom honey. If you want something that's a little more muted, less bright, that 71B might be the realm to go. It's not, um, it doesn't pop as much fruit flavor, I think, in my, in my opinion. I haven't, I can't recall a time of uh, facing like these two yeast with anything else though. So it's hard to say completely. This is more muted for sure. The D47 is a little brighter. Um, Again, they were both the same ABV, to start with at least, and then they both, you know, changed a little bit. The, uh, I gotta look up here. So the, after the primary of the 71B was 1.002. I definitely do think that this one doesn't have as much sweetness to it. Maybe that's where the brightness comes from the honey. And then the D47 uh, ended at 1.007. So just a little bit above where this is. Um, they're both really great, and I would encourage you to try using both of them at some point because obviously the more experience you get with yeast, the more you can learn how to utilize them. If I were to recreate one of these, and I could only recreate either or, I believe that this D47 is going to have a greater um, character flavor development over time. And uh, I think that's namely because that the dark notes that you get from a boche are being contrasted quite a bit by the high fruity notes of the orange blossom honey and of course everything else that's there i think that's going to develop more have a greater development this thing's still going to develop really well it's just going to be more muted in my opinion so i could continue this on and on and on and on um, however, I need these carboys for my other projects. So what I'm going to do soon is uh, go ahead and bottle these. They will continue to age. They're just going to be bottle aging instead of bulk aging. And uh, I think that's okay. I have really enjoyed doing this. I plan on doing more of these yeast comparisons in the future. If you want to see some direct yeast comparisons, I have some videos called the Yeast Shootout Series which is where I take two yeast like I did here and use the same recipe and shoot it out. And we see which one wins, quote, in my opinion. So uh, if you wanna check that out, go check that out. This has been fun. I'll may be making more videos and more content in the future. I hope you'll hit like and subscribe. And let me know down below what you think about a boche. If you have an experience using either yeast or maybe a different yeast. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.